Welcome back everybody. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you're having good luck with your gardening and all of your projects. And without further ado, let's get to today's project. It's a whopper. Now if you're wondering why am I underground in this 10 foot deep hole? Well, we are building in a geothermal greenhouse. So we're building a greenhouse that's 36 by 36 foot and we're gonna have it eight feet underground. So we're digging a hole that's 40 foot by 40 foot and 10 feet deep. That way we'll have room to bury all the plumbing and everything on the ground. So we're about halfway done right now. We've got this large machine up here. This large backhoe I rented for a month and I've been working on this for a couple of days now. Uh, I did a test <laughs> with my tractor and I was able to dig a three and a half foot hole that's about six feet long and it took about six hours. Um, I probably got 10 hours into this right now and it's halfway done with this big tractor here, this big backhoe. So it's got a 24 inch bucket on it and my tractor is like six inches I think, six or eight inch bucket. <laughs> And this is a lot bigger of a beast than uh, I'm used to. Uh, I'm used to driving it now. I've, been, I've got quite a few hours on it. So you can jump up here, get a bird's eye view. And I can probably operate it for you guys. It's gonna be pretty loud for a second, but we'll see what we can do here. up a little bit. Oh, we got a big rock. Look at that. Look at that sucker. That's uh, one of the biggest rocks I've ever seen. Out here, anyway. Oh, it's going to fall back in the hole. Oh, maybe not. It's pretty loud. Probably, you, guys, you guys probably don't want to listen to that too much. We got the sun in the background. The sun's going down. We got a couple hours of light left, so I'll probably get an hour, hour and a half worth of digging going um, after I'm done recording this. But there's the progress from up above. Stand up here. Can't really see too much. It's hard to tell on a screen because everything's flat. But over there, there's like a. 50 foot long pile of dirt, it's probably 8 feet tall. Over there, there's another that's probably 8 feet tall and 15 feet wide. Here's one here, it's probably 12 feet tall and 15 feet wide. So what I do is I dig and then I build a big pile of dirt and then I use the bucket on the front of the tractor to move all the dirt out of the way and then come back over and continue digging again. With this massive machine, we've got it for about another 28 days or so. So after I'm done digging this hole, we're going to go work on the septic system for the new house. And uh, we have another couple of other projects we probably won't mention on here that we're going to work on. And then I'm going to try to do some fendangling with the road. Not too much. The road looks pretty good. But the main road coming in here, there's a couple of spots I would like to fill in. So we may add some soil to that. And then if any of my neighbors need a couple of projects done, I might have some time left over to help them. Since I've got a big tool at my disposal, for, well, we rented it for a whole month, so it's pretty awesome. I'm going to turn it back off again so it's not so darn loud. Oh, it's chilly. It is chilly. It's been really chilly out. So this thing has a big bucket on it. Um, <laughs> I could kind of, I could probably pick my tractor up with this, no problem. This thing's really tough. Uh, I'd never driven a machine this big before. It didn't take long to to uh, get the hang of it though. It's a Case 580 Super N. It is really cool. It looks old and beaten a little bit. It just has a lot of hours on it. It's over 2,000 hours. 
Um, it does have some pretty advanced controls compared to what I'm used to with a couple of levers and, <laughs> you know, this is massive. Look at the foot on this thing. You know, I'm a big dude, so my boots aren't little. Look at the foot on this. It's way bigger than mine. Uh, my tractor is probably a quarter that size, the, the feet on it. And then the backhoe, of course. My, you know, this has got to be 20 feet long, and then it extends and goes out another four feet or so. So, I'm very fortunate to have the use of this tractor. I'm very grateful. It's really, really, really awesome. Um, I, I want one so bad. <laughs> I could never afford something like this though. It's way, it costs more than all my toys put together, I'm sure. Uh, it's diesel. I don't know what size engine it is. I haven't opened the hood to look at it. I'm sure it's like a six cylinder or something like that. Um, she's a monster and we're having fun with it and getting good use out of it. So once this thing is done, we can kind of flatten out the bottom. The idea is that we're gonna we built the we're gonna dig the hole 40 foot by 40 foot, and then we can put two foot gabions all the way around it that are eight feet high, that will hold the dirt back from falling down. And we'll probably do like a four foot high gabion, and then we'll probably put some kind of uh, uh, rubber down behind it so that water doesn't wick down inside the greenhouse. But it should be a pretty good sized greenhouse, and it will be in the ground. We'll dig a trench probably 20 or 30 feet out that way in like a big loop and then we'll run uh, some pipe through there probably four inch pipe and then bury it and then we'll run uh, air through the pipe and it should help keep the greenhouse cool in the summer and warm in the winter so that's why i say geothermal we're not using like yeah uh, like any volcanic vents or anything like that we don't have anything like that over here where we're at but i just wanted to share some of the progress it's a big one. It's a big project. So it's the biggest project I've ever taken on. And uh, hopefully I'll have the hole completed here in a couple days. You know, just spend six to eight hours each day on it and just keep going. And uh, eventually it'll be done. And then we can start building the gabions. We'll measure it out first and double, triple check and make sure that it's square. That way when we put the metal greenhouse frame together... Originally, it was a steel building that I had ordered. Uh, so it's all galvanized steel, so it won't rust or anything like that. So here's the frame and everything right here. And then we're simply just going to cover the top with uh, some plastic. Some kind of polycarbonate, I'm sure. Some kind of greenhouse material that lasts for 20 years. Something like that. We may start out with some, some film of some sort, but we'll see. We'll see. We have a lot of options on this. And I did the best I could to make it facing due south, due south, so it could get the most sunlight. And then we'll have a big staircase over here somewhere that goes down to a door that gets you inside. And then we should have, uh, I think we got 15 or 20 grow beds calculated. We'll have the big fish tank in the middle. We'll have two sump tanks, one on either side, and then uh, three rows of grow beds in there. And then down the middle, since the roof has a 14 foot pitch on it, we'll probably grow some fruit trees. Maybe in some barrels or something like that. But here's some <laughs> one crazy project that I wanted to share with you guys. So uh, thank you guys for tuning in. If you have any questions or comments, pop those down below, give us a thumbs up. And as always, keep building and try to be good to each other. Some of us aren't here for very long and a little bit of kindness will go a long ways. So God bless you all and peace. I'll walk up to the dirt pile here. Maybe not quite eight feet tall. It's a little bit taller than I am though, and I'm six foot one, give or take. We got a sifter set up over here. Alright guys, see you later.